Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for our monthly membership meeting. We're excited to have you here virtually. Hope you're all doing well from wherever you're watching from uh, watching us today. Before we begin, I would like to thank our sponsors who make this event possible. Our ultimate presenting sponsors are Medical Associates, Midwest One Bank, Q Casino, and TH Media. And our platinum partners, Anderson Windows and Doors, Cartograph, Collins Community Credit Union, Digital Dubuque, Envision, Fidelity Bank, Forge Social, Grand River Center, Grand River Medical Group, Holiday Inn, John Deere Dubuque Works, Mercy One Dubuque, Stonehill Communities, Town Square Media, Unity Point Health Dubuque, and US Bank. A virtual round of applause for all of our wonderful sponsors. I am thrilled to welcome our presenter today, Mr. Keith Ray, President and CEO of Travel Dubuque. Keith is responsible for program development and implement, implement, excuse me, easy for me to say, implementation at Travel Dubuque and has been involved in the, with the Field of Dreams, its world famous ghost players and the National Farm Toy Museum in Dyersville and many events that these two attractions have hosted over the last 30 years. Keith has extensive experience with event coordination in the United States and across the world. Some of these would include Ghost Player Tours, America's River Festival, Team of Dreams, the Dubuque Grand Excursion, RAGBRAI in 2007 and 2010, just to name a few. Currently, Keith serves on the board for the Upper Midwest Convention and Visitors Bureau, Iowa Tourism Industry Partners, and other organizations across the state of Iowa and the Dubuque area. And I'm very lucky to call Travel Dubuque a neighbor, so I'm able to introduce Keith here in person with me. So with that, Keith, welcome. Well, thank you, ma'am. The appreciate stage is it. yours. Yeah, good. Well, good afternoon, everyone, and uh, thank you for that uh, that amazing introduction. I appreciate that. Um, we're going to talk about the travel industry today. What's happening here in the tri-state area? Because realistically, you know. Uh, we are located in Dubuque, but we work with our partners throughout the Dubuque County and the entire region, including Southwest Wisconsin, Northwest Illinois and such. And that's what has made and continues to make this area such a strong destination of all the different things that we have to see and offer here. I'm going to start out, as you can see, and I think one of the biggest things that makes us and continues to make us a unique destination is just the the topography of our area, the upper uh, Mississippi River Valley and the draw that that has throughout the entire season. And I think this slide really shows that uh, better than, uh, than, you know, we really, you know, then we typically highlight this quite a bit. Um, our mission basically for the area is leading tourism destination promotion and development to enhance and expand the Dubuque area experience. And uh, my staff and I, there's uh, six of us full time, and then we've got another about five to six uh, individuals that are part time. We work very hard on a daily basis to implement this mission throughout the entire year. Who we are, uh, Travel Dubuque is uh, one of the, it used to be you were a uh, CVB. Uh, now we are destination marketing organizations, and our, you can read through this basically what our task is in, in such, uh, what we're uh, with the hotel motel tax and a variety of county, Dubuque County investment, other partnerships, uh, other events, everything that we do um, throughout the throughout the year. But that's basically who we are as an organization. We work very closely with the Dubuque Chamber of Commerce, City of Dubuque, the County, uh, Greater Dubuque Development Corporation, and a lot of other entities throughout the region to really promote Dubuque as a viable destination uh, to live, to work, and to come and visit. Uh, one of the things you can see from uh, expenditures, these are travel related expenditures. And you can see through the years, uh, this is gives you a brief, I think about a 10 year time frame. but really when Dubuque became a, uh, a extremely uh, viable destination is when the Port of Dubuque came online in 2003 and 2004. With the investment, the public private partnership that we saw down there, uh, the National Mississippi River Museum, the Grand Harbor, the Grand River Center, the River Walk, all the other uh, different uh, manufacturers, uh, businesses that have been developed down there since really developed us. And you can see through the years, the expenditures where we have increased significantly uh, with that. And uh, they, uh, 
So about a 40, almost a 50% in regards to, and this is through 2019. We have not got 2020 yet, and we anticipate a, a significant drop, obviously, with COVID with that. But uh, you can see from a payroll, employment, state tax, and such, how the uh, travel industry here is a huge economic impact numbers for our, our county and our entire region. This is also, this is a hotel motel tax uh, through the different quarters, through the different, the same time frame, And you can see it gives you a good indicator once COVID hit. Uh, and that's listed at the bottom there. That's fiscal year 22. That would be for our budget of uh, travel debuts. And where, you know, we are down just about in that quarter one, we were down almost 57%. Quarter two, we were down 20, just about 25%. And quarter three, we were down 38%. So overall, we're down about 20, almost 22% on an annual basis from a hotel, motel, ta hotel, motel tax uh, income. And uh, I mean, with, we all know, uh, starting last March, all the way through the entire season, you know, the summer we picked up somewhat, not back to usual standards like we normally are. But it did pick up. But once we got into the fall and when that second round of COVID came, it really made a big difference for us. But, uh, yeah, so you can see the impact. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that <clears throat> just in regards to what, uh, what that did and such, uh, you know, what, you know, from uh, impact and occupancy and such, as you can see here, um, where that is and, and, and such. It made a huge impact for us. The impact from COVID overall um, for us, obviously the travel industry, I feel for all the different, uh, you know, businesses uh, across the, the country, across the world that were impacted, probably the travel industry was impacted the hardest uh, from this because we have to have the ability in our industry, people have to have the ability to, to travel and to gather. And obviously with the pandemic, that wasn't happening. So we, uh, yeah, we were hit very hard. And you can see just from this slide, the impact from COVID for us here, travel industry into Dubuque as a whole, uh, the uh, 20, just about 22% from fiscal year 22 to fiscal year 21, the hotel motel tax is down. Occupancy once again was down of almost 22% from 2020 to 2019. For us, you know, just uh, staffing, um, we had to furlough three employees, one returned full-time in June, the other two, they are no longer with our organization. They took other jobs uh, in the community. Our welcome center was closed April through June because we couldn't have any in-person uh, contact, but it is open now. Our, our website, which uh, Travel Dubuque is the, the, that's where we gear all of our marketing towards. All the marketing we do in the different communities throughout you know, the region. Our number one uh, area is the, uh, the Madison, Kane County, the uh, area, Dane County, excuse me, area, Chicago suburbs, the uh, I-380 quarter, which would include uh, Waterloo, Cedar Falls, uh, uh, Cedar Rapids, and uh, the Iowa City Cor Corville area, and then uh, Des Moines metro area. Those are our, our areas where we go into from a marketing standpoint. Uh, we push everybody to Travel Dubuque to showcase all of our partners, lodging, the different uh, restaurants, the different attractions and such. And you can see from uh, from that, just uh, our analytics, we were down over 35% from uh, 2020 from compared to 2019. So a just different significant amount of events. As we all know, everything was canceled. And we had a lot of great events that were scheduled for in here. We actually were very excited going into 2020. We thought it was going to be the best year ever uh, for the travel industry here in the, uh, the Tri-States area. And, and obviously with the pandemic that did not happen so significant loss of income across the board for everyone and i'm not telling you that are on this uh meeting anything that you don't know but it's just it's amazing to me honestly the uh the hardships that this has brought on to our industry but it's also amazing to me be perfectly honest with you that we're still here and i don't mean my organization but i mean a lot of our our lodging partners, our restaurants, our bars, our attractions, all these different organizations have really held on here. And a lot of that is to the uh, the governmental programs that were implemented, a lot of local support across the board 
uh, to help make sure that these businesses are still operating as we come through this cloud of this pandemic. Uh, lost business, the meetings. Um, you know, the, the Grand River Center, we feel, is one of the top um, meeting destinations, not only in Iowa, but the entire Midwest. And it's a great midweek uh, um, business uh, for us, for the entire community, from the hotels to the restaurants, to everyone. And that we had, you know, as you can see, significant loss. And then the group tour also. Uh, the group travel, that's the buses that you see throughout the community. That was also decimated last year uh, with COVID. No one was traveling, no one was gathering. The river boats, you know, that's uh, we're Dubuque is extremely lucky to have that world famous Mississippi River flowing right outside our, our doors here, especially where we're located here at 300 Main and down in the port and such. And a number of those boats come in, typically starting in July, going all the way through October. And they uh, bring a, a lot of activity during that time frame uh, to, you know, like the National Mississippi River Museum, the downtown area, and the Twilight, uh, the Riverboat Twilight does a great job. Their passengers actually stay here while the other boats, they stay right on, they sleep and such. But all those were canceled last year, and that was a huge impact for our entire area of lost business. Some of the things impact as far as change of businesses and such, you know, the, the retail dining, you know, they changed and uh, the chamber did a great job. Travel Dubuque did a great job. The city of Dubuque did a great job of uh, really promoting the, uh, the carry out, the pickup on the dining options that our partners had and made a big dis difference for them. Now they've ebbed and they've, they have flowed, you know, how they come out of the pandemic, what their business model looks like, you know, because everyone across the board in my industry, like many industries out there, are having a very difficult time getting necessary staffing uh, to come back to full speed like they were, you know, pre-pandemic. And uh, we'll continue to, to see that. Hopefully, we're get, that will get better as we continue to evolve through this. So the virtual aspect, the National the Mississippi River Museum, I uh, did a great job with that, promoting uh, virtually different aspects with what they did. And I know they're gonna to continue to do that as part as they evolve also out of this. That's the one thing I will say, I think a lot of us in our industry and in industries you know, across the board learned a lot of different lessons in regards from COVID, how we could become more efficient, how we could work better as a group and as an organization. And a lot of these businesses are going to continue to implement those practices that they did because they saw that it made them a better, more efficient business. So one thing that was dramatically popular was anything outdoors, parks and trails, rec recreation retail, the winter recreation. Sundown Mountain had one of their best years in the last 30 years. The slopes were full. And granted, we had a great snow uh, season and such, but people just wanted to be outdoors. Um, I know the Dubuque County Conservation, Brian Preston, they had record numbers at the different county parks throughout the entire season last year. And, and it was extremely difficult and probably still is trying to get a like a kayak or a bike or anything like that because people want to be wanted to be out and about and outdoors and, and such. And that'll continue as we continue to come out of the pandemic. Marketing um, and what we did, how we shifted from that, uh, once again. Uh, Taylor Cummings is my Vice President of Marketing for Travel Dubuque. Does an amazing job working with all of our partners throughout the entire area to promote what we've got. And there was a lot of questions from a safety standpoint, what was open, what wasn't open, what you know precautions were put in place uh, for COVID and did a great job with that. Some of the other things that uh, she implemented was the fall passport, working with uh, our partners to once again, outdoors, you know, the different pumpkin patches, apple orchards and such parks and that to get people out. We also work getting people through the door with a lot of the different businesses here. Once we kind of started to come out, the holiday marketing, we work locally with different uh, boutique shops to get uh, around Christmas time. And that went over extremely well. One of the great partnerships we do have here in Dubuque is a destination marketing fee. And we've got seven hotels that participate in that. Uh, they collect a voluntary dollar each each room per night from their guests and then that goes into a separate fund 
that we work with them and we utilize that for various uh, marketing uh, different items. It could be to promote a, a, a deal that they've got going on or the River Museum's got going on or something like that. So that partnership, that leisure campaign we did went over extremely well. And that's just something we're very proud of because uh, that continues to do very well, even through the pandemic. As we all know, lodging was one of the major uh, industries that was hit very hard with that. So you can see from, uh, we're starting to come back, which let's all give a big round of applause for that. We've got listed here, the hotel occupancy, January through May to date. And our numbers have, you can see compared to uh, 21 to 2020 and uh, dramatically, dramatically better. We're still off a little bit where we normally would be, you know, compared to like uh, 2018, 2019 in those years, our weekends are doing extremely well. Uh, we're seeing that across the board. Actually Friday numbers, our Friday occupancy numbers, by occupancy I mean the obviously the hotel rooms and that, uh, our Fridays are stronger than they've ever been. I've been in my position going on almost 15 years now. Those numbers are the strongest we've seen. It's that midweek business. It's that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, the business traveler. We've not seen that come back yet. That's not just Dubuque. That's everywhere. That's not only in the Midwest. That's nationwide. That is a key element um, you know, for that early week business as a business traveler. If those numbers were where they normally would be, I think we would be exceeding right now our normal occupancy. But from a leisure traveler, it's uh, you can see these numbers are very encouraging. And we're hoping now that we were rolling in, well, we're just about mid-June, as we roll through July, August, through Labor Day, that these numbers are going to be comparable to what they are, you know, pre-pandemic. So that's very exciting. What we're doing, marketing efforts moving forward and such, you can see now as we continue to roll out, we like to compare ourselves from a marketing standpoint, our analytics and such. We're not really comparing like now where we're at to 2020 because that's just, uh, you know, that's just an incredibly unique um, situation. We're comparing now, May 20, or June, May 2021 to 2019. I guess it's a more adequate, I think, of where we're at from an engagement standpoint. And you can see, just con you know, to uh, compare May 2021 to 2019, and 2019 was an amazing year for us, one of the best ones we've ever had. We've got almost 59% growth in analytics engagement on Travel Dubuque. That's unreal. And a lot of that is just the hunger for people looking for things to do day trips, weekend getaways and that. And that's where we're seeing that in those markets I mentioned before, the Chicago metro area, Dane County and all these other areas. But to compare that to 2020, and I'll do it just here, that's almost a 420% increase in growth over where we were last year at this time. So as you can see, significant. But just going down through those items for marketing effort, the engagement has just been unreal, and we're extremely happy with that, obviously, as we continue to cut, roll into the summer time frame. Meetings and conventions, uh, that's Julie Kronlage, my vice president of sales. Julie is one of the top salespeople, not only in the state of Iowa, but the entire Midwest. Uh, you couldn't have a better spokesperson and uh, for our entire region, and she's got a lot of different things coming up. That's the one element that we're seeing is coming back slowly is the meeting side of it. And, you know, the meeting, you know, it, it, typically what we're looking at is a hybrid mode where it's in person and virtual. You know, I think as we continue to go through, we continue to recover from the, uh, the pandemic, you'll see that becoming probably within a year or two more in person. But at this point, it is this hybrid mode. But the thing that's amazed me, in all honesty, as we came out of this, the thing that I thought personally would come back the slowest is the group tour. Once again, the bus tours. We are mobbed this late summer and fall. Uh, the river boats are coming back strong, and we Julie's just been working almost around the clock in uh, setting up the different iter itineraries for all these bus tours. So the demand, the pent up demand to travel once again, and remember that group tour is basically an older demographic, much like me and older and such. So for them to be, you know, 
to feel safe enough to get back on that tour bus and go out and visit and such is incredibly encouraging. So we're very excited about that. And we're, you know, the progress we've seen there has been significant. Uh, some of the other stuff, guest services, our welcome center, Becky Karkik does an amazing job over there. That's really the front door to the community. We continue to get a lot of people where they're located right on uh, the corner of Main Street and Third. A lot of people up and down Main Street stop in there to get, you know, in, you know, not only directions, but really to get my staff's ideas on what they should see, what's a good place to go to eat, different things like that. So we had to change that, obviously, the, what our policies were in there with COVID. And uh, that continues to be a very, uh, we continue to evolve through that. But Becky does an amazing job with that. And one of the other things that we do in partnership with the city of Dubuque is we're in charge of the sister cities program. And Dubuque has three sister cities around the, the world. And Becky will be putting on this um, uh, fall, we're gonna be doing a sister cities photo exhibit, which highlights all those different, those three different communities and such. So look forward to that. That'll be a free event that we'll be marketing and you'll be able to attend this fall. Sports and event, Tyler Doherty, my Vice President of Community Relations. He's been with me now for almost nine years. Um, my right-hand person in regards to all these different activities. You can see some of the events that did take place in uh, fiscal year 21, but we've got some significant um, uh, events coming up here in fiscal year 22. And uh, a couple of them I'll talk about as we get further in. One of the ones we're very excited about is the Julian Dubuque International Film Festival. Uh, that they celebrated their 10th anniversary this year, took place the end of April. It was a week long celebration. They had record attendance, record ticket sales and such, hit it out of the park. And we're very excited uh, for Susan and her staff and their board. They're very dedicated and that's a wonderful event for our community and did very well. So for us, that was very, cause I was kind of sitting back thinking, okay, how is this gonna be attended? How's it gonna be received? And they rocked it. So that was very exciting for us. And to see that once again, people want to get out, they want to do stuff, they want to get back to a quasi normal life. And JDF really showed that that was the case. So the big one happening this, this summer, one that we were all excited for. I remember uh, the chamber in January of 2020, the forecast luncheon, I was a presenter for the travel industry and we highlighted this game in, in 2020 and then everything changed. <laughs> and uh, it ended up initially, it was gonna be the Chicago White Sox, New York Yankees. And then with the pandemic hit and Major League Baseball did come back, uh, then it was gonna be the uh, Chicago White Sox and, and uh, St. Louis Cardinals. And we worked very closely, obviously my staff and I and our partners out in Dyersville, Worked very closely with Major League Baseball on that, all the way up to about 10 days out from the event uh, that was happening. And then the Cardinals got COVID and that got canceled. But we have been working ever since that uh, happened. We've been working with Major League Baseball and it is happening on August 12th this year. It will be the Chicago White Sox and the New York Yankees, but will be broadcast internationally by Fox Sports. And uh, what an amazing event for not only our region, but the entire state of Iowa. This, this uh, slide kind of gives you an overview of what it looks like. Um, the baseball diamond is there, what you see right here, the lights are there and such. Everything else, they'll be coming in, Major League Baseball and their partners will be coming in here in, in, after July 6th and start to build. They basically roll in, they build the stands, they build the clubhouses, they build all the infrastructure that they need to conduct this game. And uh, that'll be, Number of tickets that will be coming out here, how big it's going to be. And also there will be tickets available uh, for people to be able to enter a lottery and that will all be coming out too. So if you're interested on about uh, trying to attend this game, uh, go, continue to visit MLB.com. That's Major League Baseball's website. And they'll be having updates here as we get closer on how you go about registering, you know, to uh, get into the lottery and such. But if you want to work the event, we're working, Travel Dubuque is working very closely with Major League Baseball. They need about 300 individuals from parking to ushers to various other things. And uh, uh, go to our website, TravelDubuque.com. There's a link there you can link on, you can click on, 
And then you got till July 1st to sign up. And then there'll be a process that they'll go through. And you it is a paid event. It is paid to work. But what a unique you know, opportunity and such to engage with all these individuals coming from across the world, really, to be to see this first major league game played in Iowa. What an amazing thing. So I, I got to tell you, I can't be more excited. Uh, like Justine said at the beginning, I've been associated with the Field of Dreams uh, since actually the movie was made. So to see this actually taking place really in my backyard, because I live about a half a mile away, is uh, quite a pretty significant. So you, to say I'm excited is not even touching it. So uh, let me see here real quick. So you can see some of the different activity that's you know takes place out there throughout the years. Um, a lot of different, it continues to be a major, the Field of Dreams continues to be a major destination. I've had the opportunity to be involved with all the major events that have taken place out there. Many of you probably don't remember, but the first one was in it was called the Upper Deck uh, Extravaganza in Labor Day weekend of 1991. And that really took the field and took it from just kind of a curiosity to make it the, the worldwide attraction that it, it has been and continues to be. You can see some of the pictures here. Um, the ghost players down in the lower one. Uh, I started the ghost players. Those guys continue to appear. And David Ross, if you're a Cub fan, we brought him there in 2019. He's a uh, manager of the uh, Chicago Cubs right now. We had him out there, and what a great guy. I'm a big Cub fan, but I would say that even if I was a Cardinal fan, he was just a, a great individual. So one of the things that we've created, uh, myself, uh, my staff, and we're working with our partners in around Dyersville and the county, City Dubuque and such, you know, with all these people, all this, because when we talk to Major League Baseball, they have told us pre-pandemic and even now, that of all the events that they've done through the years, whether it's a World Series, All-Star Games, any special events, there has never been as much anticipation for any event than there is for that MLB game at the field. So we anticipate a significant amount of people coming to the area just to experience what's going on. So we created a pre-pandemic, it was a four-day festival called Beyond the Game, really to showcase and highlight what Iowa and this region has to offer. Now, with the coming out of the pandemic, you know, we are making it a two-day event. And we've got the only, everything is outdoors. The only thing that is indoors is the If You Build It exhibit. We created that last year. It's a museum for the making of the movie and what's happened there since. It's incredibly popular. People that make that trek to the Field of Dreams come in there because they want to see it. That's inside. It's in Dyersville on Main Street. But everything else you see here from the experience, Iowa Zone, Kids Zone, Regional Entertainment, the Country Concert Night and Movie Night, all outside. So just to touch a little bit on this real quickly. How am I doing on time, Justine? Got a half hour. Oh, I do. Well, there you go. All right. I can talk a while yet. So the experience, Iowa Zone, once again, people are coming from around the coast. Uh, We've got, we've been working with Fox Sports uh, pre-pandemic and they're bringing, and, and now even through this whole thing, um, they're bringing 60 of their high profile clients from around the United States to the game. They gave them the opportunity uh, to go to Denver to the All-Star game or to the Field of Dreams for the MLB game. And the, every single one of them chose the MLB game. So we've got all kinds of guests coming in. So we're creating this big, zone area that businesses we can highlight from John Deere to Blue Bunny to uh, Muscle Lighting to all kinds of different businesses that are located in Iowa, started in Iowa, and really showcase what the state has to offer. Uh, we didn't know how it would go, be received from a business standpoint, but we had a cap it at 30 and we're, we're full. And we can't wait for that. And everything I'm talking about is all free to go see, go free to attend, kids zone area for the families that will be bringing their, their kids down. Region, we'll have a, uh, a regional stage with uh, local bands throughout the tri-state area we'll be playing. On Wednesday night at uh, Commercial Club Park in Dyersville, uh, Mercy One is our sponsor uh, for this. I appreciate uh, all these businesses stepping up and helping Midwest One. It's presenting sponsor of the event along with Travel Iowa. But Mercy One specifically is for the country concert night. And we'll have a free concert that night at Commercial Club Park in Dyersville. And we've got three national country acts 
that will be playing there. And we're real close to announcing those and uh, couldn't be more excited. And that's gonna be extremely popular. So that's Wednesday night. And then that night also, if you don't wanna listen to country music down at the town square area, where the regional stages are on our LED screen, we'll be showing the movie Field of Dreams. And we're hoping to have a couple of the actors from the movie will be there that night to do a meet and greet with folks and such. Then on Thursday, on August 12th, which is the actual day of the game, uh, we'll be having all kinds of activity throughout the day. And then that night down in Town Square will be the official viewing party, Major League viewing party. Uh, we'll have two big LED screens set up a lot of other activity going on in that. So you can come out and sit out on your lawn chair, on your bag chair or your blanket and watch the game on these big LED screens and, and that, that. So very exciting. And uh, once again, you know, our objective across the board is to make this a very positive experience for all these people that are coming from around the world. So they're going to come back. And our bigger objective is obviously is to make this a a very positive experience for Major League Baseball. So they come back and make this an annual event because what a marketing opportunity, what a branding opportunity, not only for Dubuque and Dubuque County, this entire region, but the state of Iowa. I think it's, you know, I think that's one of the things I've been the proudest of being associated with the Field of Dreams through all these years is just the incredibly positive light that it puts the area where I grew up, where I still live, how, internationally the positive light where that it has put that on and this is a great opportunity for us and i can't speak enough once again for all of our the different businesses that have stepped up to help with beyond the game to sponsor it and such to make that a free event but also all the partnerships throughout the, the region uh, the Duke airport um, todd dalsine and his staff out there well, i have uh, we i talk to have with major league baseball almost daily and they can't speak highly enough about todd and uh, just the commitment that he has to make sure that their you know, experience is extremely, goes about as good as possible. Our lodging partners all the way through, because you can about imagine rooms are gonna be very difficult to get, not only here within Dubuque, but that's all the way to Cedar Rapids, Waterloo and areas like that. So all these different entities, the county you know, stepping up, uh, last year they needed, there's a road, a back road that came into the Field of Dreams that a lot of traffic goes through now, and uh, and we needed it as uh, to get the, the buses in for the players and that to be paved, and the county stepped up and did an amazing job with that. So a lot of different, uh, both private and public entities, you know, stepping up to make sure that this event goes off as seamless as possible, uh, so we can get these people back here year after year and continue to build this brand for the tri-state area. And with that, one of the things that we've got a long time uh, relationship with is the Voices uh, Group, Voice Productions. Uh, when they were down in the millwork during their annual fall um, month long um, exhibit, uh, Travel Dubuque has worked very closely with them. And then with the whole mural project, we've worked very closely. But one of the things this year you could, that they brought to us early, well, it was actually middle of the winter, the, the, when the main street which you come in on, the Locust, and then the building that this kind of, we feel, is a gateway coming in. And uh, we partnered, they presented an opportunity to us. Um, we feel it's a evolving billboard for us. We're partnering with them. This year, obviously, it's the about the American pastime. I don't know if many of you know, but Charles Comiskey, Comiskey Park, which is located in downtown, uh, he is second home. He's the gentleman that started the Chicago White Sox and his second home was in Dubuque. He married a young lady from Dubuque. And uh, so um, John Pregler, if you know John, uh, he, he's given me a lot of history. I'm, John is a very intelligent man and does a lot of research. And he, he's given me a lot of history on baseball and how it got started and how the American League and really the American League kind of got started here in Dubuque, like around 1906. And Charlie Comiskey was a was a part of that and that's why he's featured on this uh, and also red favor red favor is the baseball player he's a hall of fame player from cascade iowa and he was on those those white Sox teams that kind of were featured in the in the movie and such so <clears throat> they're the two individuals you see but the american league in general we felt that it was appropriate this year with the game the first ever 
Major League Baseball game being played in Iowa. We thought that was appropriate. Now, next year, as many of you know, we've got Viking Cruise Line is going to be starting here in, uh, in steaming the upper Mississippi, and they're already sold out. Their boat for, for uh, 2022 is already completely sold out, and they're doing extremely well for a fiscal year 23. So we've got a 10-year deal, the Voices, in, and we do a lease on this building. So every year you'll see a new mural there that kind of highlights what's going on in the travel industry, you know, that year. So we're really excited about this partnership, but we're very excited about the whole mural project throughout the entire downtown area. We hear time after time after time how people, they make a pilgrimage here just to see that element. And once again, that's what makes Dubuque a very unique destination for all the different things that we have to see and, and offer here as a destination. Very exciting. I mentioned it earlier, the river boats. Once again, Dubuque is blessed with that, that river right outside our front door. We're also blessed, like I talked about a little bit earlier, about our, all of our city partners back in the late 90s that recognized what makes Dubuque unique is that river. They put forth the effort, they put forth the time to go create that port of Dubuque, which is really a showcase along that riverfront and where these boats, these excursion boats come in, they dock, their guests come off and we get to showcase everything we have in this, in the downtown area and such. We've got significant boats coming this summer, 32. We can't wait. My staff, we help coordinate all the trips, the bus tours around the city. My, my staff are the step-on guys and such, so we're going to be very busy July through October. I'm kind of keeping my fingers crossed. So typically, we have to worry about the river being too high. You can see those smokestacks, them getting under the bridges coming up the river. I'm getting a little worried that the river might be too low that if they can get into the American Trust Plaza down in the port and get their game playing out. But we're hoping that, you know, we start to get a little bit of rain here for a number of reasons, obviously, but that's a, you know, we'll see what happens with that. But yeah, we've got a number of boats and these excursion boats, not only the Viking Cruise Line, but the excursion boats as whole continue to really grow in popularity. The other boat lines, there's two other ones they're both looking to add boats or have added boats, and they continue to be very popular. And once again, for us, that means a lot of business for the River Museum. It means a lot of business for the downtown area. And we're extremely excited because it's just another thing that makes us unique as a destination. Summer events, we've got a lot of activity. Uh, stuff has been extremely... I had the other, I think it was a week ago, I was down, had an event down at the Alliant Amphitheater. Uh, Major League Baseball was back doing a site visit and we were down there. And when it was done, we drove through the Millwork District. It was a Wednesday evening. Could not believe how packed it was down there. On a Wednesday evening, you know, Seven Hills and all those different entities down there were just, what an attraction that Millwork District has become and will continue to grow even more so as you get more private entities going into that area and such. So there's really the vibe I feel is just, I love it. Because as all of us, if you look a year ago where we were, I mean, obviously we were all incredibly worried, you know, not only for our, our personal and our family's, you know, health in regards to the pandemic, because even at this time last year, we still didn't know a lot about the pandemic, even though we don't know a lot about it now, but we knew even less than we do now. But even all the different industries here that I work with, I've worked with for you know going on 30 years, incredibly worried about the hotels, the restaurants, the bars, the attractions, the venues, all this stuff. We have come through this and we're starting to you know see a lot of activity coming in. And we, we've seen some already, as you can see, you know, the kickoff of summer happened May 28th. We've worked very closely with the, the JCs on the 4th of July celebration on July 3rd. That's a very dedicated group of individuals. I've had the pleasure of working with through the years with all the different events that we've uh, coordinated and hosted here in Dubuque. And uh, they're going to just rock it because we feel that's, you know, that's instrumental during that time frame, the amount of people that brings in to the uh, tri-state area. Dubuque Farmer's Market, the Millwork uh, Night Market, Food Truck Fridays, 
that they happen the second Friday of the month. We just had it last Friday down at Washington Square Park. It was extremely well received. You're starting to see a lot of people coming back to the downtown area. I know I've seen it just at the noon uh, time in the different restaurants and such, uh, people out and about, people getting their noon lunch and that stuff. So that Food Truck Friday was very popular before the pandemic, and it was very popular last Friday. So that you'll see, you know, we'll see continued growth in that. We got the Dubuque County Fair coming up July 27th to August 1st. Can't say enough about Kevin and his staff out there. They do an amazing job uh, throughout the entire year, not just with the fair, but with all the different activities. One of the events I, I had listed earlier was uh, Tyson Snowcross. That brought in over 10,000 people in January and when we needed business. And Kevin and his staff do a great job with a variety of different events and just very enthusiastic and very uh, proud of their facility out there and what it does for not only Dubuque, but the entire county. And uh, I just applaud him. I love I love people like that, the dedication they have to their organization. Beyond the game that I mentioned early on, you know, that's the two-day festival we're doing around the MLB, the new exhibits. I was down at the ribbon cutting last week. Sully did a great job with that, Molly. He's the man. And uh, at the National Mississippi River Museum and Aquarium and their new uh, exhibit that they've got going on, the River Museum is having great attendance. Uh, they had an incredibly good um, spring break, and that, that momentum has come and continues on into the summer. We're very excited about that because, as we all know, that's the jewel that we've got here as a destination. You know, that the National Mississippi River Museum, Kurt and his staff, what they do down there, what they have done with Jerry and Terry Goodman through the years. It's just been, it really is what has taken Dubuque and put us at the top of the list in regards to destination for the state of Iowa. Then we've got a lot of activity at Five Flags. I know HR's got the different uh, concerts, different events coming up there through the summer, into the fall. He's very excited about it. I talked to Brian Raystraw down at Backwater Stage. They've got some tremendous outdoor entertainment coming this summer. I can't wait myself to see some of those and such. And I applaud those guys for what they're doing and making the investment that they have and really bringing people in. And they typically, they, these events that the Backwater Stage does is like a Thursday night or a Sunday night. Because once again, remember, we're a strong destination on that Friday and Saturday. It's that midweek to early week. And with what they're doing with these concerts, they're bringing people in at a great time for all of us. And I really thank them. Music in the Gardens up at the Arboretum. Love that group up there. You know, the dedicated volunteers that they have year in, year out and everything that the draw that that is, and all the other live music that would go on in the downtown area and the mill work and throughout the entire area is significant. It makes one of the unique things, I told my board this the other night, was we, as we look at our marketing analytics every board meeting, you know, when I started, obviously a long time ago, but our demographics, our analytics were typically that 45 to like 65 was where our major engagement was on our website. In the last few years, we've seen significant engagement in that 18 to 28, 30-year-old, and it's significant. A lot of that has to deal with what's happened here in, the, in Dubuque with the Millwork District and all the other activity, this live music, the different uh, venues that are out there and such, and we see that continue to grow. And I also think that has a lot to do with the different breweries, the brew pubs that are happening throughout the community and such. But, you know, just a big applause to all those businesses for what they've done as we continue to evolve, <clears throat> not only from a visitor standpoint, but also from a, we talked early about, you know, the employees, you know, that how difficult it is to get employees now and such. And that helps make Dubuque a viable option for employers to be able to recruit people to our area. So, you know, kudos to all those businesses that, are doing this and helping make Dubuque and the tri-state area what it is. So, so well, like I said early on, you know, moving forward as we come, we are coming out of this pandemic. And I said, and I actually penned this line. I should probably copyright it because others are using it now. But tourism is dependent on being able to gather and travel. And, uh, and during that pandemic, we could not do that. And there's certain elements, you know, like. I've got friends that are going over to Europe right now, 
you still can't do it much over there. You still can't. We've got people that we work with, with with MLB partners that are out of Canada. Same with them. You know, when they go back to Canada, they have to quarantine for two weeks and such. So, so but in the United States, in our area, we're starting to come out of this. And uh, you can see that, like I through my presentation, you can see where our occupancy, our analytics, our group tour sales, welcome center traffic, and just in general, you know, the enthusiasm is coming back to pre-pandemic numbers. And we're hoping to exceed that and to grow this market even more. And that's our goal always as a travel destination. Our job is to market Dubuque in the tri-state area and to get uh, groups, meetings, families, uh, individuals, couples, and businesses you know, to come in and to enjoy what we have to offer here. So. I want to thank you for your time. How am I on time? You're doing great. Okay. All right. I want to thank you uh, for your time today and uh, get out and, and visit. Be a, be, well, how do you say that? Stay home uh, uh, tourist where you can go visit all these things that we have and go back to your house or apartment at night. So thank you very much. Don't run away just yet. All right. We'll see if we have any questions. Keith, thank you so much. That was phenomenal. Um, I am going to say unpopular opinion, but nobody's here to throw anything at me. Go White Sox. <laughs> Just leave your water in your jar. No, you're good. <laughs> um, no, I, it, this is a wonderful presentation. It just gives me kind of renewed excitement for our community. So mm -hmm. I love that. Uh, I'm going to see, ask if anybody has any questions, drop those in the chat. Um, I'm going to actually start off with a question. Sure. In all your years of doing tourism industry, what is the weirdest experience you've ever had? Oh, man. <laughs> That's a lot of, I can cover a lot of territory. <laughs> I, you know, I don't know, I not really weird. Um, you know, I don't know, it's just, I've been blessed uh, honestly with the, uh, you know, with the ghost players and, and all that um, allowed us, and we toured all over the world for 20 years. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think all of us um, in life, you wanna make a difference, you know, you wanna make a difference with your family, you wanna, if you can make a difference with your job and such, and we did a lot in those 20 years with the United States military. We went out, we worked with the U.S. Oil and Department of Defense. And they would bring us into these bases all over the world, and we would do our show. And, and a lot of times, there was only two shows. And uh, we, I mean, literally, we were in 28 different countries at that time frame. Wow. There was only two bases that were kids were not at. One was uh, Camp Red Cloud, which was up at the DMZ at, between North, North Korea and South Korea. And the other one was 800 miles uh, south of Honolulu, it's Johnston Island. And that's where the United States takes all their chemical weapons to be destroyed. And there was no kids, but every place else there's dependence. And I don't think people realize that, you know, unless you're in a war zone like Afghanistan or Iraq and that stuff, but all these bases around the world, there's families with kids. So we would come in and we would do, you know, a youth baseball, softball clinic, then we would do our common routine like we do at the field. And then we would play a celebrity baseball or softball game. And I was at the field back, I think it was in, uh, it was like 05 or something like that. I used to run the field of dreams and I could tell this family when they came in, they were military, cause you could tell. So I started talking to them and they were, they were Navy and they were going from Florida to, up to the West coast, they were moving. And uh, we were talking and that stuff. And the lady kind of looked at me and she goes, you look familiar. And I said, well, she goes, are you one of those players? And I said, well, yeah, I ran, you know, the ghost players. And I said, she goes, we saw you in Japan, you know, in, in like it was 1997 and stuff. She said, my son still has a picture on his bedroom wall of, of you guys, you know, with them and that stuff. And she said, you have no idea the difference that made for us, for you guys to bring a part of America over to us. Oh, wow. And that touched me. That's something I'll never forget because it showed that we made a difference in people's life. So from a weird standpoint, probably not, weird. but from a from an impact. The weird that, might have to be over cocktails yeah, sometimes. That, yes. There you go. Love that. Yeah. All right, a uh, question from Tom Chesney. What are some of the best ways that local businesses can help support travel and tourism alongside Travel to View? You know, it's a great question. And, you know, I think the biggest thing, you know, if you're in the industry, obviously, it's just that customer service. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're, if you're, front desk employees, you know, your wait staff, any of that, just that friendliness. And even if you're not in the industry, because we get a lot of people, you know, tourists will stop in at banks and ask, you know, 
hey, you got, you know, where is this? You know, and that would be just so people are informed and they're friendly. That helps dramatically, you know, because once again, what we hear from our guests when we survey them is Dubuque is a, is a safe place to come to. It's clean and it's affordable and people are friendly. So right there alone, you know, that's that would be my suggestion. You know, any businesses, obviously in the in the industry yourself, you want to do that mm -hmm. because you want to have that you know reputation. But even if you're not in the, specifically in the travel industry, just you know, with that, for people to be you know engaging and friendly to people that are that come. Yep, got to have that Iowa nice. Yep, exactly. All right, Todd Dalsing says, Keith, thank you for the update and continued partnership. Looking forward to a strong 2021-22. Come back and fly to view. There you go. You Love bet. that. Yeah. All right. I don't see any other questions at this time, but thank you again to Keith for the update. I'm so excited about everything that's going on in Dubuque, and I am going to try to get my husband to go to the White Sox game, even if he has to be an usher. <laughs> Thank you all so very much. Appreciate it. Please keep checking the DubuqueChamber.com and our calendar of events for upcoming events. And we hope to see you all live very soon. Thank you.